For 20 years now, faculty, students, and staff have come to Jepson Hall to learn and teach about leadership studies. We're making this video to share some of our stories. We hope you enjoy it. It was an idea that started working on when I was here as a student, and of course it came full circle. We come along with an opportunity to be distinctively different from any college or university in the United States of the world, to have a school of leadership studies. I said, this is really, really interesting, but I also think that you have to be careful with a concept like this. It was really exciting. Sometimes it was contentious, but that's how things are born. I came to University of Richmond because of the Jepson School. The Jepson School of Leadership Studies was something that I had never heard of before, but something that I was certainly interested in. Being in the Leadership School helps you learn more about yourself personally. I'm proud because Jepson has allowed me to realize my dreams. Finding myself in leadership roles, I found that I was energized, and found something interesting in my education that otherwise I wouldn't have found. I hope to find a way through academics and through the study of leadership to give students who were not in those roles an opportunity to learn about leadership and hopefully have them affected in a positive way as I had been affected by actually being in those roles. I saw it too as a need in our country that and today I think we still have that great need to have leaders who have a moral and ethical foundation. I was excited that Bob was willing to start on this unbelievable, exciting path. We had been having some dilemmas and deliberations here by the faculty and perhaps some of the administrators about whether leadership studies really was a kind of program that fit into a high quality institution like the University of Richmond. But those questions were resolved without any serious and major difficulties. There was dialogue, there was discussion, there was debate, and then there emerged a reasonable consensus that this was a good way to go. I worked so hard on the introduction that I was writing and had to write for Norm Schwarzkopf. He had just come back from his last tour of duty in Iraq, and obviously he was a world hero. So I worked really hard on writing an introduction that I thought people would appreciate and that he would appreciate. And it came time for me to introduce the general. So I stood up and I said, I have an unusual task today and one I'm very proud of, I'm here to introduce our speaker. And before I can utter another word, the entire crowd stood up and started applauding. I never got to my introduction, so I just said, Norm, the, the mic is yours. And then, of course, the cheering got louder, and uh, we stood there for a good 10, 12, 15 minutes while the crowd applauded General Schwarzkopf. So all my work was interesting, but it was for naught because truly he did not need an introduction. And Gil and I got here, the essential structure had been made by Joanne and, and others. They kind of worked through the curriculum and then the job was, well, how do you make that, you know, how do you create that curriculum and, and apply it then? And I remember it as being exciting, but also a lot of hard work, a lot of stress to, to get, you know, we were creating courses. Uh, from the get-go and, and sometimes having to create our own books to go with the courses because nobody had done that before. The joy was in the process, how hard we worked together to do this. I mean, it was, we were so motivated by each other. We were all here on Sundays, I remember that. <laughs> we were here every single day for the longest and I was, but I was motivated by my peers as well as what my particular task was, and you could go to anybody and talk through anything about what, how you were trying to create your course and what their thoughts were. Working on such an exciting purpose together like that made such a huge difference. We put the first class through so much. They had to put up with all of the new changes and every new class. They um, called us to a meeting and 
basically read us the riot act because our curriculum our course didn't make any sense and they didn't know what we wanted from them and it was everything we wanted from leadership students and that was they were practicing exactly what we were hoping to get out of them it's never nice to be criticized but we had it coming <laughs> and i just thought boy if we can make our students like this then then we've really done something Throughout every class, there was an element that ensured that you, you always were cognizant of the both moral and ethical components of leadership. Because leadership isn't just to get people to do what you want uh, because you want them to do it. Uh, it's quite simply, it's getting them to do the right thing, um, often for themselves. One of the things that attracted me to the University of Richmond was the Jepson School, just because it was such a unique program. Leadership studies kind of encompasses a lot of things that I had an interest in. And, and I felt like it could be applied to a lot of different sorts of careers. I love the way with Jepson you can uh, intermix lots of the things that you learn in other parts of the campus. At the end of the day when I graduated from Jepson it was all about a critically thinking, uh, communicating, and being able to apply a broad base of learning to any problem. 20 years ago universities, you know, they had volunteering and things like that but what we were doing with service learning back then was really cutting edge and to do it to the extent we did was cutting edge. The concerns that I had uh, were washed away with, you know, with people of like minds wanting to have a good liberal arts approach to it. And I think that uh, people have looked at our program and seen the quality. I believe I can often tell when I'm running into a Jepson alum. They really do have a sense, a, first of all, of gratitude to being part of something so remarkable, but also a sense of purpose and of direction and a possibility that I know the school has done something to inculcate. What they find in the school is a kind of a crucible that tests those ideas, that really asks, well, what would it mean to be a leader? What would it mean to fulfill this ambition? And they come out of it far more enlightened about what the possibilities are, what the challenges are going to be, and how they might possibly bring these things to be. Jepson is my academic home. It was a place where I knew that not only could I be surrounded with people who were interested in similar things as I was, but also the diversity of, of leadership. The best experiences for me were teamwork, where I learned how to work with others um, and uh, learned how to apply critical thinking. Those are the skills I use every day. What we really want from our students is to create a sense of responsibility that they have for the world around them. I could not be more proud of what the types of students that have come out of this school. I'm we must be doing something right. I think the students who have become alumni, part of the Jepson Nation now, that I've been about thousands strong now, I guess, um, are exactly the types of students who we would hope that would come out of a place like this. I think that it's something that prepares you for any field. It's not saying that we're all preparing ourselves to like be politicians, but we're all prepared to make the best of whatever career choice that we have. They go into all fields. They make wonderful impacts in the field. They take, they take their careers and organizations in directions that you would never think. One of the things I love about the Jepson School is that it's always to find its own future. It's going to continue to do that. There's great leadership, great faculty, some of whom have been here for 20 years, some of whom just joined us this fall. It has students who continually replenish it with a sense of energy and possibility. I look back on uh, warmly and fondly here for some so happy to continue to be involved as an alum. Bob is a very smart person. We're very proud of him. He's a very visionary guy. He's a leader himself. I think it has been a phenomenal success. I think it is still in the process of emerging. Leadership is ever changing, but the principles remain much the same. The idea of being able to influence others to progress, and that's what society is always looking for. The Jepson School affords its students and its graduates the opportunity to say, I have had a different education. I have had an education on steroids. I've had an education on ethics, and I've had an education on how to live and make it in this world in a very positive way. I could not be more pleased with what has been done here and um, the education that these students are getting here. I just couldn't be more pleased. It's special. 20 years ago, the Jepson School was an experiment in higher education. 
I think it's safe to say today that we're a success. We look forward to the next 20 years of the Jepson School of Leadership Studies.